Okay, so pad view, click on the icon and title bar at the top, default stereo kit view. Now we're going to look at this pad view now. But before we do, a couple of very important things. If you've got the Drum Machine Designer track selected and highlighted, whether it's a drummer track with Drum Machine Designer on or an instrument track with Drum Machine Designer on, if that track is selected and highlighted and Drum Machine Designer is open, then if you're in default stereo kit view, on the left of the inspector column we see the Drum Machine Designer final stereo channel, as we already looked at, right? This is the final stereo channel for Drum Machine Designer. The whole kit arrives here in stereo. Okay, and this is the main channel for the track. On the right of the inspector column, we see Logic's final mixer left right output that goes off to your headphones and speakers. It's just a copy of the one in the mixer. In the library, we see all the Drum Machine Designer kits. Click on one of these, it loads the kit. And if this is a drummer track with Drum Machine Designer on it, if you change the kit, it won't change the drummer. But when we select a pad and go into pad view, everything changes. Now, on the right of the inspector column, we see the Ultra Beat separate output in the stack, in the mixer, for the Ultra Beat voice connected to the pad. It's just a copy of the channel in the stack in the mixer. So here's the snare pad. Here's its Ultra Beat separate out from the stack. Ultra Beat out 5.6. Here's Hi Hat 2. Here's its Ultra Beat separate out from the stack. Ultra Beat out 17.18. We don't need to go into the mixer, we just select the pad and we see its Ultra Beat separate out from the stack here on the right of the inspector column. Also, when you select a pad, the library switches to show you factory voices in the category of the selected pad. So if I select a snare pad, the library shows me Drum Machine Designer snares I can load. If I select a hat pad, the library shows me Drum Machine Designer hats I can load. If I select a tom pad, the library shows me Drum Machine Designer toms I can load. These pads are categorised by type. That's a kick pad. That's a snare pad. That's a tom pad. That's a hi-hat pad, etc. These are categorised. More on that later. Okay. okay, now one last thing. Accessing the Ultra Beat. We know that in the mixer, if we go into our stack, Right. The very first channel inside the stack is the main Ultra Beat Out 1, 2 with the instrument at the top. All the other Ultra Beat Outs have got the output number at the top. Ultra Beat Out 3, 4, Ultra Beat Out 5, 6, Ultra Beat Out 7, 8, etc. But the very first channel in the stack is Ultra Beat Out 1, 2. So at the top it doesn't have the output number, it has the actual Ultra Beat. We can open it from there. Now, every drum machine designer kit that you load Kick 1 on the bottom left is always rooted to Ultra Beat Out 1, 2, the main channel with the actual instrument on. So when the mixer is not open, we know that when we select a pad, its Ultra Beat Out appears on the right of the inspector column here. So all you do is select the kick number 1. It's always rooted to Ultra Beat Out 1, 2. So its channel appears on the right of the inspector column. Ultra Beat output 1, 2, there's the Ultra Beat at the top. You can open it from there any time. Boom, like that. The other way to open Ultra Beat is you just select any pad, including the kick, and the left-hand control is always the pitch, which is connected to the pitch of the voice for the pad in the Ultra Beat. Right-click on that pitch, open plug-in window, and it will open the Ultra Beat, because that pitch control is always connected to the Ultra Beat pitch for the voice. That opens the Ultra Beat as well any time okay now one last thing to say here's the ultra beat these are all the voices here in the ultra beat right well, each one of these voices is connected to one of the pads now i can't get into explaining this ultra beat now because this is a tutorial for drum machine designer but when we get deeper into this tutorial further on and we get into making synthesized and sample and synthesis type voices that live in the library, you know, our own custom voices, we're going to be messing with and accessing these synthesis parameters. Okay, but the way it basically works is you select a voice, this is the synthesis for the selected voice. Okay, so um, 
really you need to go and watch the ultra beat tutorials on our channel because you really need to learn this ultra beat it's all explained including the synthesis okay because you know the more you know ultra beat the more you can get deep into drum machine designer because this is the engine for drum machine designer okay so go and watch the tutorials on ultra beat on our channel if if nothing else just watch this the chapter on synthesis so you understand what all this is for the voice okay okay um now we select a pad we're in pad view these smart controls at the bottom now change these are now smart controls connected to the ultra beat voice and it's separate out for the pad now on the right we always have volume and pan there's the snare pad here's its ultra beat separate out output 5 6 the volume controls the fader for the output the pan controls the pan for the output alt left click to reset either okay always volume and pan on the right on the left is always pitch let's right click and open the ultra beat okay now sadly when you select a pad in drum machine designer it doesn't automatically select the voice in the ultra beat connected to that pad you got to do it manually so there's the snare pad it's connected to this voice in the ultra beat there's the low tom it's connected to that voice in the ultra beat etc okay so let's select the snare it's connected to this voice okay now on the left we always have the pitch smart control which is connected to the single oscillator pitch or if it's a dual oscillator voice it connect it controls both oscillator pitches okay now almost every single ultra beat voice for every single drum machine designer kit is a single oscillator voice the bottom oscillator using a sample so the pitch controls the pitch of that bottom oscillator with the sample in the pitch okay but very occasionally you'll get a dual oscillator voice like this kick okay this is the kick it's connected to this ultra beat voice it's a dual oscillator voice bottom oscillator has got a sample in but there's a sub oscillator there active as well so the pitch smart control for this kick pad controls the pitch of the top oscillator and the bottom oscillator both okay let's go back to the snare there's the snare and it's connected to this voice in the ultra beat okay now after the pitch almost always you have the length control the length control controls the amp envelope decay that's how long the voice lasts before it decays to silence so you can make your voice play back for less time shorter and shorter or you can let it play all the way through okay and obviously if this is a sample voice this controls how much of the sample is allowed to play back before the voice goes to silence length is almost always the second control after pitch it controls the amp envelope decay but very occasionally this length control is in the third or fourth position okay so pitch and length on the left volume and pan on the right the four smart controls in the middle control the EQ and plug-in effects on the output for the ultra beat voice for the pad now kicks have body and presence these two controls snares have body and presence claps have body and presence where you see body and presence let's go with this snare here's its ultra beat out five six let's open the eq that's the eq for the snare output the ultra beat snare output for this pad where you see body and presence it controls the eq body is a low mid or bass boost or cut Alt left click to reset and presence is a mid boost or cut.
Okay, and the free the frequencies being changed by the body and presence will change depending on the drum, but basically that's what body and presence does. It's a, a low, mid or bass boosting cut and a mid boosting cut. Okay. Now if um, a pad doesn't have the body and presence controls controlling the EQ on the ultra beat output for the for the voice, it will have this tone plus minus control, like this tom does, or like this hi hat does. Okay, let's go with this hi hat too. Here's its ultra bit separate out, 1718. Let's open the EQ. So if a voice doesn't have the body and presence controlling the EQ, it will have this tone, and that is a general tone control. Push it that way, it cuts the bottom end and boosts the tops. Push it the other way, it cuts the tops and boosts the mids, low mids, or the bass. The frequencies change depending on the drum. And also the cutoff slope here, cutting the bottom end off, that gets that changes in its steepness depending on oops, depending on the voice. Okay. So the tone control for this hi hat, push it that way, it cuts with that steep 24 dB octave slope, cuts the bottom end off while it boosts the tops. Push it the other way, it cuts the tops, and it boosts the mids, the low mids at around 300 hertz. Right? But if we go with this tom, which also has the tone control, it's, here's the tom selected, and here's its output, ultra beat out 11, 12. Let's open the EQ for the tom. Now the tone control for the tom, it's the same principle, but it's just, look, as I'm pushing it that way to cut the bottom end to boost the tops, it's got a much shallower slope, just 6 dB octave, cutting off the bottom end. All right? And as I push it the other way to cut the tops and boost the bottom end and mids, it's cutting the tops, but it's giving a very broad mid and low end bass boost. Okay, so the frequencies that are being controlled and the the slope of this bass cut changes with whichever drum, but that's what this general tone control does. So all the voices, they'll either have the tone control for the EQ or they'll have the body and presence for the EQ, right? The other smart controls, they control plug-in effects on the output. Okay, so one you'll see on nearly every voice is this envelope control. The snare has it. The hat has it. The tom has it. The claps have it. Okay, let's go back with the snare again. So here's the snare, here's its separate out, ultra bit out 5.6. Where you see the envelope smart control, there is an envelope plug-in on the output for the ultra beat. Um, for the pad, the voice connected to the pad. Right here is the output for the snare. There's the envelope plug-in. Almost every voice has this envelope plug-in on its output, and it's a uh, it, it makes the voice more snappy and punchy, or a softer attack. Okay, I'll left click to reset. Pretty much every voice in every kit has this envelope on it. And then um, another smart control you see a lot, like on the hi-hat here, is this spread control. It's on the tom as well, spread. It's on the clap as well, spread. Where you see the spread control, let's go with the clap. There's the clap pad, here's its ultra beat output, 7, 8. Where you see the spread control, there's a stereo delay on the output. Look, there it is, open the stereo delay. And the spread control controls this delay, turning it up. Okay, and it's a very short 10 and 20 milliseconds left-right delay time. So turning this up, turns up that hard left-right pan, very short delay time to the left and right of the speakers, giving the voice stereo spread. Okay, you'll see that on a lot of voices. Otherwise, you'll see things like distortion on this snare, which is controlling the fuzz wah plug-in, giving distortion, you know, just turning up this distortion plug-in on the snare output. Oop. Like that. Yeah. Um, or on this kick here. Um, it's got this distortion smart control here controlling this overdrive plug-in on the output. Yeah. And um, for example on this shaker here, here's its ultra bit out, 3738. It's got this smart control called Crush here, look, while well, that's controlling this bit crusher on the output. Yeah. 
So sometimes you'll see another control controlling a, a different plugin other than the spread for the stereo delay or the envelope for the envelope plugin. But notice the shaker here has got the spread, the stereo delay, and the envelope, the envelope plugin on there as well as the bit crusher being controlled by the crush control. All right. So that's how that all works. And very, very occasionally there'll be one extra smart control assigned to one additional synthesis parameter for the Ultrabeat voice for the pad. For example, this hi-hat 2. Okay. Let's right click on the pitch. Come on, open the Ultrabeat. All right, the hi-hat 2 here is connected to this voice in the Ultrabeat. Now it's a single oscillator voice using a hi-hat sample, but there's a noise oscillator here. All right, so this noise smart control is connected, look, to the noise oscillator level there, and it turns up the amount of noise oscillator being blended in with the sample oscillator with the hi-hat sample at the bottom. Okay. I'll give you one other example of an, an additional synthesis parameter assigned to a smart control. This kick connected to this ultrabeat voice. We looked at this earlier. It's a dual oscillator voice, right? Bottom oscillator with a sample and a top sub oscillator. So the pitch control controls the pitch of both oscillators. Okay. But with this voice, there's an additional smart control called sub, which is assigned to this sub oscillator level. So you can bring in as much of the sub oscillator as you want with the sample oscillator at the bottom. So sometimes there'll be one additional smart control assigned to an additional synthesis parameter for the voice, but rarely. Right, so there you go. That's all your basics. Right, we've looked at all the basic stuff. How the stack works, the routing and everything like that, how these smart controls, the main view smart controls are connected to the things in the stack and how the effects um, smart controls are connected to the effects on the final channel. How the different views work when you're in main view for the library and the inspector column here and how it changes when you're in pad view for the library and the inspector column and how the smart controls work for pad view. All right, that's all your basics. So um, now we can go in deeper and let's start getting into it um, and looking at making custom kits and custom voices.